Welcome to KJV Home Bible Study from the Man Cave. This is J.C. Legar with Chloe Legar, and today we are going to continue with our topic on the doctrine of the Holy Spirit. This will be part three in the study on the Holy Spirit's ministry concerning the Scripture. But, Chloe Legar, before I do any teaching, what do I need to do? Pray. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you, Lord, for this study. Lord, we've looked at inspiration and illumination and also preservation. Today, Lord, we're going to look at revelation, how you have revealed yourself to the 40 authors in the Bible, and you told them exactly what to write. Father, I pray the Holy Spirit will fill me right now and enable me to teach this topic in a way that it's clear and understandable and that everybody can be blessed. Pray it in the name of Jesus and everybody said... Amen. You know, one thing, Chloe, that a lot of people compliment us on is they can see our relationship as a loving relationship between father and child. And in the same way, we're going to look at a Bible verse where when you read it, you can see the love of God for his child, King David. And when I read that, I'm like, man, look at God just loving all over his son like that. Just, it, it just warms your heart. And let's check it out, because seeing God gush on his son is just so beautiful. In 2 Samuel 23, 1 through 3. Now these be the last words of David. David, the son of Jesse, said, And the man who was raised up on high, the anointed of the God of Jacob, and the sweet psalmist of Israel said, again, the way God just pours, you know, his love on David like that, just like, oh, it's so cute, said, the spirit of the Lord spake by me, and his word was in my tongue. The God of Israel said, the rock of Israel spake to me. Now God, or David is complimenting God and praising on God. It's just so beautiful there. He that ruleth over men must be just, ruling in the fear of God. Again, that is Second Samuel 23, 1 through 3. So again, I just want to show right here that the Spirit of the Lord spake by me. So, you know, when King David was writing like Psalm 22, where he's, you know, saying, they have pierced my hands and my feet, it was God speaking through David about what Jesus Christ was enduring upon the cross. And things that King David should have no idea about God was speaking through him because God knew the end from the beginning. And it happened a lot in the lives of the prophets when God would use them to write something. Suddenly they're like, um, God, what did I just write? Like here we have Daniel. And I heard, but I understood not. Then said I, O oh my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? And he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand. But the wise shall understand. Daniel 12, 8 through 10. And Isaiah here says, As for me, this is my covenant with them, saith the Lord, my spirit that is upon thee, 
and my words which I have put in thy mouth shall not depart out of thy mouth, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, nor out of the mouth of thy seed's seed, saith the Lord from henceforth and forever. So the words that God gave Isaiah the prophet were to be passed down to his children, and not only to his children, to the whole world forever and ever. All right, we have a verse here in 1 Timothy 3, or 1 Timothy 6, 3 through 6. If any man teach otherwise, now this is speaking about the false teachers, the Kenneth Copelands, the Benny Hindus, and the, you know, Joyce Myers and all, Joel Olsteins, all these clowns, they're gonna come and they're gonna speak words, this is my Bible, I am everything it says I am, yeah, false prophet, a wolf in sheep's clothing, but, anyway, <laughs> I digress. But God is giving a warning here. If any man teach otherwise, and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine with which is according to godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing, but dotting about questions and strife of words, Whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmising, perverse disputes of men of corrupt minds, and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. But godliness with contentment is great gain. I remember this Creflo dollar guy saying, I refuse to go to heaven broke. I'm like, oh, get, ah, give me a freaking break. Anyway, yeah. But here we have young Jeremiah. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull, up, pull down and to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. Jeremiah 1, 9 through 10. Again, this is what the seed of the word does when you speak it and share it with somebody that's all you're meant to do you take your hand you put it in the bag you pull out the seed and you scatter the seed and where it lands that's god's business all you're meant to do is to speak the word because the power is in the word and it'll do all these things all right, continuing. Second Peter 1, 19 through 21. We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. 2 Peter 1, 19-21 So imagine a ship with sails on the water 
and the wind coming along and blowing upon the sails, causing the ship to move. In the same way, the holy men of God were moved by the Holy Spirit. In Ephesians 3, 3 through 5, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in few words, whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. And he goes on to say how that the Gentiles and the Jews would become one and a new creation in Christ so that we are no more seen after the flesh. Well, I'm a Jew or I'm a Gentile, but no, we are a new creation in Christ. We are the church triumphant. All right. So, yeah, I really enjoyed coloring this. This looks cool. All right. And this is speaking about the revelation that God gave to Paul of the rapture when the dead in Christ rise first. And, well, let me read it. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. 1 Thessalonians 4, 15 through 18. Now, <clears throat> what's funny about the rapture, excuse me, coffee time. <sighs> is you have three views to look at. You have pre-trib, which means that we believe that Christ will return for the church and catch us up before the events in the book of Revelation where God pours 21 judgments upon a Christ-rejecting world. There are mid-trib, where people believe that in the middle of the tribulation is when God calls people to you know to be taken out and then you got post trip which sees the church going through the 21 judgments of the great tribulation and at the very end we bob up and then we come back down like a yo-yo and we rule and reign with christ on the earth again that is a topic where you can discuss it and you know have fun talking about it but it should not be strife, meaning you should not be hating a brother who holds a different view. Like I teach KJV home Bible study, but if you're reading another version of the Bible, which I will not agree with, I still see you as a brother or a sister. If you believe in the death, burial, and resurrection, I'll encourage you and try to move you towards the King James, but if you're holding fast to whatever version you're comfortable with, I'm not going to argue with you. I'm going to love you. You're my brother in Christ. You're my sister in Christ. If you believe in a death, burial, and resurrection, we're family. So again, the words here at the end, they're meant to be words of comfort. Where, wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Remember, the word of God is a sword. We're not to be hacking and slashing each other. <laughs> you know, look at all these weapons here. If I'm to use them and cut people up, 
that's not the will of God for my life. I'm to love people and that be shedding innocent blood. All right, so we're going to end it with Jesus in the book of Revelation. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, and what thou seest write in a book, and send it unto the seven churches, which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Tyra Tyra, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. Revelations 1, 10 through 11. So here we have Jesus appearing to John on the Isle of Patmos. There would be no way John could come up with this technology that he saw about the future. One thing that made me realize the Bible is the Word of God is in Revelation 11, where it speaks about two witnesses that are killed by the Antichrist, and the whole world sees their dead bodies laying in the street of Jerusalem, and these people are sending gifts to each other. All over the world, people are rejoicing about two dead people in Jerusalem. And on the third day, they rise from the dead. And the whole world sees their dead bodies rising from the dead and ascending up into heaven. My question is, how is it possible 2,000 years ago for anybody that is like halfway around the world to see two people dead in the street and then three days later for them to rise and ascend up into heaven. 2,000 years ago when that was written, it was impossible. But today, with our technology, we can see what's going on in Jerusalem on the internet, on YouTube, on Facebook. We can picture somebody with an iPhone recording them getting killed record them rotting and then everybody's having a big party and then suddenly these two guys get up <laughs> and do this number and they hear come up hither and then they ascend up into heaven and then everybody's freaking out like oh my god they're back that was impossible 2000 years ago but today with our technology the scripture will be fulfilled one day so that was, like I said, imagine John writing what he wrote, and then he thinking to himself, how is this going to happen? Well, again, God knows the end from the beginning, and one day we're, people are going to be watching <laughs> those two witnesses killed, come back to life, and ascend up in heaven. Again, you, you'll find this written in Revelations 11. Once I read that, I'm like, dude, this is the word of God. Come on. So, this is J.C. Ligar. I hope this teaching was, you know, something you enjoyed personally. Teaching on how the word of God was put together. And how God had his hand completely on the scripture. And that the scripture is perfect. To me, this has been the most rewarding study and one of my favorites. Again, the foundation of my faith is the Word of God. Without the Word of God, I don't know anything about God. You know, I'd be like anybody else, just trying to, you know, make a God in my own image. But because of the King James Bible, I dig into the Word and I pull out everything that God has to say about himself, and then I go, wow, this is a God that I can worship, this is a God I can trust, because this is a God who is a savior, and he saved a sinner like J.C. Ligar, and Chloe Ligar, she's a cute little sinner too. This is J.C. Ligar with Chloe Ligar, I pray this was a blessing to you, and I pray you'll join us next time. God bless you.
everyone. Have a great day. Bye-bye.